you have a Bible with you this morning, church? Open up, if you would, to Psalms chapter 86. Psalms chapter 86, if you do not have a Bible, uh, we will have it available to you on the screen. And, uh, or if you're tuning in online, it will be at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to start reading in verse 1, and I'm going to stop reading in verse 7. And this is a famous psalm. It's called, it's known as the Psalm of David. Or David's prayer. Psalm of David or David's prayer. Would you follow along with me this morning? It says this. Lord, bend down to listen to my prayer. I am in deep trouble. I'm broken and humbled and I desperately need your help. Guard my life for I am your faithful friend, your loyal servant for life. I turn to you in faith, my God my hero, come and rescue me. Lord God, hear my constant cry for help. Show me your favor and bring me your, found, your fountain of grace. Restore joy to, my, to your loving servant once again. For all I am is yours, O oh God. Lord, you are so good to me, so kind in every way, and I'm ready to forgive for your grace fountain keeps flowing, drenching all your lovers who pray to you. God, you won't pay attention to, won't you pay attention to this urgent cry? Lord, bend down to listen to my prayer. Whenever trouble strikes, I will keep crying out to you, for I know your help is on the way. His help is on the way. If you're taking notes this morning, you can title this message, the God of again, the God of again. Would you pray with me this morning, church? Jesus, I'm so grateful for this day, opportunity for us to get to come and to worship you, God. God, I pray you would continue to move in this place, that the power of your spirit would breathe on us again. God, that we would walk out of this place changed and better because of who you are and what only you can do. God, without your presence, we're just here hanging out and singing songs. But because of your presence, Jesus, that's what makes the difference. And that's what makes this atmosphere powerful, whether people are in the room or watching online. God, I pray that you would move in this place in power. In Jesus' name. And everybody said together, amen, amen, amen. Church, have you, have you ever had a moment where... You desired something of your past. Anybody? Anybody? You've, you've ever had a moment where you desired something in your past? I mean, hello, this has been, we just come out of, out of the year 2020. And I don't know if you remember the very beginning. It's actually almost exactly a year ago when Williamsburg itself got kind of hit and got shut down uh, because of the global pandemic, COVID-19. And I remember the first couple of weeks that it was happening after the fact that we thought it was going to be two weeks at first, but then turned into like forever. And people were saying this, this phrase. It was like, well, welcome to the new normal. The new normal. I was like, wait a second. Like, I like the old normal. Like, anybody with me? Like, what was wrong with the old normal? Like, I kind of like the old normal. Ever had a moment where you look back and you're like, I kind of desire what was in my past? As human beings, I think we naturally, at least for me, I speak for myself, we naturally have a dislike for change. Partly because I feel like when it comes to things that are in our past or things that we know, it comes with a sense of familiarity, comes with a sense of, of, of comfort, some comes with a sense of security. And whenever we start to step out into something new, this new normal or this new situation, this new season, it comes with the feeling of uncharted waters, the feeling of risk, the feeling of unmarked pathways or unpaved roads. These are moments of our life that sometimes when we come up against, we're like, man, I just kind of wish things were back how they used to be. Anybody ever been in that situation before? The fear sometimes of stepping into something new. 
I think sometimes as human beings, we, we can think about this in life. And, and I think sometimes the source of why we might fear moving forward into something else or why, my, why we might look back in envy of what we used to have is because the past is known. The past is secure. The past, we at least knew what was going on, but going into the future, it's unknown. And doubt can start to sink into our heart. And I don't know, sometimes even as I approach God, if I can be honest with you on a Sunday morning today, church, as I approach God, sometimes I, I can look at what he's done in my past. I'm like, God, thank you for what you did in my past. But there's this little bit of doubt that you'll be able to do it again in the future. Anybody with me this morning? Just because God did it in the past, the, our mind can start to slip into this. Just because God did it in the past doesn't necessarily mean he's able to do it again. God made me, he helped me feel comfortable in the past, but God, I don't know, I don't know if I can feel comfortable moving into this new season or, or this current challenge that I'm walking into. I, I don't know if I'm fit for, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have the grace for this. Maybe we can look back of, of seasons of our life where we felt financially stable or maybe our career was in the perfect place and maybe you look at your life right now, maybe you look over the past year and things Things have gotten a little bit off track or off course or you've missed your rhythm or gotten out of rhythm. I want to encourage you this morning that we serve a God of again. We serve a God of again. I want to talk to us a little bit this morning about the God of again. Isaiah chapter 43, it says to forget the former things. Come on, sometimes we like just to rely back on the former things. It says to forget the former things and God says, behold, I am doing something new. Do you perceive it? I'm creating new rivers in the wasteland and new roads in the desert. I want to encourage you right where you are today. Maybe you've been walking through a challenging season. Maybe you've been figuring out how in the world are you going to be able to step forward. Maybe you might even feel crippled in fear of taking a step towards the future. And I want to encourage you this morning that our future is found in the God of again. We can have hope instead of fear when it comes to stepping into our future because we serve the God of again. In this passage that we read in Psalms chapter 86, it's a, it's a prayer of David. I love David. I love talking about David because David's life, there's so many points where we can really relate to David. And David was this king over Israel. He was the, the giant killer. He, he, was, he was this incredible hero of the Bible. But you know that David actually had lots of seasons where he, where he was up against setbacks. David had lots of seasons where he was in struggle. And this, this passage we read this morning in Psalms chapter 86, we don't quite know what setback David was fighting against in the moment. We just know it was one of those moments for David. Multiple moments. There was a moment with David where he was fleeing from his own king, Saul. As Saul was jealous of him. The king of Israel was jealous of David and was coming after David. And David was what was on the run from Saul for his life. And there's multiple moments where if you were a David, imagine being David, and you think, God, man, I wish things used to be how they were. When I killed Goliath, when everyone was shouting my praises, and now I'm on the run, I'm hidden, I'm, I'm in ambiguity. God, I feel like I'm running for my life. I wonder if this prayer we read this morning was a prayer in that season of David's life. Or maybe it was the season where David had one of his lowest moments when he was the king of Israel later on in his life and, 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 and he fell into sin and he committed adultery with Bathsheba. And to make matters worse, he had her husband killed to conceal the secret of their sin. And he has this broken moment where he's just broken before God and and in that moment, you can imagine feeling the separation because of your own, your own mistakes and totally off course on a setback. I wonder if this prayer that David is praying was a prayer from that season of his life. Or maybe it was when his own son Absalom tried to come up and take the throne from David, turn the whole nation against him, a mutiny against their own king to come after David. And David was on the run, on the run from his own son Absalom. I wonder if this prayer was a prayer from that season. God, hear my cry. I'm desperate. 
Bend your ear to me. I need you more than ever before. A cry from David. I wonder. You know what's interesting though about every single situation of David's life is that every single time God always restored him. Every single moment that David found himself off course or up against a setback, every single moment where David could have reflected on his past and desired his past, every single time he encouraged himself in the Lord and God brought him forward. God brought him forward. David found hope in the God that restores him again and again and again and again and again. And I want to encourage you this morning, church, that today, doesn't matter what you've been walking through, doesn't matter what you've been stepping into, doesn't matter what the, the different storms are going on in your life surrounding your present or moving into your future, that you don't have to live in the past of what God has done. But you can look forward and have hope and cling to Jesus and know, God, I have hope in you because you are the God of, again, if you did it before, you can do it again. If you brought me comfort before, you can bring me comfort again. If you gave me a relationship before, you can give me a relationship again. If you've healed me before, you can bring healing again. If you've cured my depression before, you can cure it again. If you've helped me get through this addiction before, you can help me get through it again. This word, again, it's a powerful, powerful word, church. Every year, I, I kind of pray at the end of the year for God to give me a word for the next year. And after reflecting on this past year in January, I just really felt like this word, the word again, is a prophetic word that I feel like God was speaking to me. And I, and I hope that maybe this can encourage you and maybe it can be a word for you this year. As I was feeling like, man, this past year I was up against setbacks. This past year, things that I thought were going to take place didn't take place. Things that I was working towards or building towards seemed to slip through my fingers. Man, God, are you able to do those things again? I just feel like this passage is, David, he says, restore my life, your fountain of grace. Pour it, overflow with me, drench me again. I feel like God wants to speak that to you this morning as he's speaking it to me for this year. That God, he is the God of again, he will speak to you again. He will give you revelation again. He will bring breakthrough again. It's a faith-filled word that you can start to declare over your life before it even takes place. God, I believe in faith. I've got expectation. Anybody in the room with me this morning? I've got expectation in the room that God, that you've done it before. I'm going to put my doubts to rest, and I'm going to decide to trust in you for the future. My hope is in you, Jesus. The God of, again, the God who is able to do immeasurably more than what we could possibly think or imagine. The God that is able to take your today and actually grow it into something you never thought it could. The God, the God that is in charge of your life, that he doesn't let the past seasons of your life go to waste, but everything else to build and build and build and build. He is the God of again. Because of this hope that we have in the God of again, we don't have to look back on our life in the nostalgic, warm and fuzzy feeling of those were the good days. Those were the good old days. Those were the days where God was moving. Those were the days of revival. Those were the days. No, no, no. We can look forward with confidence in the God of again that our best is still yet to come. That as long as there's breath in our lungs that there is hope. Amen. I have one thought for you this morning. And, and then we're going to close out this service and we're going to have our, our baptisms. You don't want to miss the baptisms, by the way. It's the most powerful moment of church that we get to do when people make the decision to, to go, to, to, to make the public decision. To say, I'm, I'm dying to myself and raising back to life in Jesus. Side note. But I have one thought for you this morning when it comes to approaching our hope for the God of again. And it's this, to choose, choose, choose. To fasten our hope to Jesus above everything else. Choose. Maybe you're taking notes this morning. You can just write that in all caps. Choose to fasten my hope to Jesus above everything else. 
Paul actually says, and I think Joseph, when he was praying earlier, he actually referenced this very passage. It's in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm sorry. If you don't have a, a Bible, you can, you can look on the screen. I think we have it prepared for you. But it says this in verse, uh, in verse 8, Paul is talking to the church. He says this, all of our hardships that we passed through crushed us beyond our ability to endure. And we were so completely overwhelmed that we were about to give up entirely. It felt like we had a death sentence written upon our hearts and we still feel that way today. It has taught us to lose faith in ourselves. Come on, can I get an amen this morning, church? Can I get an amen this morning, church? To lose faith in ourselves and to place all our hope and trust in God who raised from the dead. He has rescued us from the terrifying encounters with death. And now we fasten our hopes on him to continue to deliver us from death yet again. Yet again. Paul says we're going to choose today. To fasten our hopes not on ourselves, not on what we can do on our own, not on the things that have come in the past, but to choose to fasten our hopes to Jesus who can do it again and again and again. The word fasten, I love that word to fasten, fasten. To fa it's, like, it's like a strong word. It's more than just to take hold of, but fasten, to make sure something is secure, to fasten. I remember when I was uh, in youth, we used, to, we, we used to go to youth camp. We still go to youth camp. Hopefully, uh, camps will start again in the near future. We'll see what happens with camp. But I remember as a kid going to camp, and, and I remember doing this high ropes course. And I thought that I like loved heights. Like for, uh, my whole life, I was like, yeah, I like to climb trees. Like high ropes course is my first time doing it. I was like, you know, it's just, it's just a high ropes course. Like what's the big deal, you know? Anybody ever done a high ropes course before? Okay, it is terrifying. <laughs> the thing about a high ropes course is that they start you off really, really low. And you've got your little carabiners and a little cord that you like, you fasten yourself to. And I'm thinking like, okay, this is no big deal. We're like 10 feet up. And I'm like, I'm fastened to the carabiner onto this cord. I'm like, this is not, this is kind of a little scary. But like, this is not, I'm like 10 feet off the ground. And then you get up to like 20 feet off the ground. And you're like a little bit more shaky. And then a little bit higher off the ground and higher and higher and higher. And then you're like 60, 70 feet off the ground. And I'm like shaking. And I'm like holding onto my carabiner. I'm like fastening myself for dear life. Because I know that the carabiner and the cord, that's the one thing that is holding my life. It was the one thing. I could hold on to the tree, but the tree is not, the tree is not allowed to hold on to. I can hold on to the little ropes and stuff that they, that they give you to make it really hard. They're like, they're like tricks. They're trying to like make it hard for you. I'm like, I'm not touching that thing. I've got my carabiner. It's the one thing that is secure. I'm fastened to it. I wonder, church, what is the one thing that when tragedy strikes, when a year like 2020 strikes, when financial difficulties strike, what is the one thing that your life is fastened to? I remember when I was young, my dad used to always say, always, he used to always say this, is that you can see a lot about someone, you can learn a lot about someone, not by how they act when everything's good, but how they react when everything is bad. What do you cling to when everything is going wrong? What do you cling to when you're full of fear? What do you cling to when you're full of doubt? What is your natural reaction when you start to lose your balance in life? I feel like a lot of times we're, we're walking and we start to fall. We've got to grab something really tangible that's hard. We can, you know, our carabiner, like we've got to cling on to something. Paul, in this passage, he says, fasten your hope to Jesus. Choose to fasten, fasten your hope to Jesus. It's in Jesus. It's in Jesus and Jesus alone. Everything else will fail you. Everything else is insecure. Everything else will leave you coming up empty. Everything else is inadequate. But Jesus is the one thing we can fasten our lives to. Our hope for our future is in the God of again. Yeah. Team, you can join me and we're going to get ready to close out this service this morning. The God of again. Psalms 
20, verse 7, it says, Some trust in horses and others trust in chariots. But I'm deciding to put my trust in the name of the Lord. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I, as for me, I'm deciding to put my trust in the name of the Lord. You can put your trust and your hope in your finances, but your finances will always let you down. You can put your trust in the relationships around you, but every person around you, guess what? They're imperfect, and they will at some point always let you down. You can put your trust in yourself, but yourself will always let you down. But when you put your trust in Jesus, he is our rock and our foundation. He's the beginning. He's the end. He he died on a cross for you and for me. We can actually have trust and faith in his faithfulness. Fastening our hope to Jesus. What does it look like to fasten your hope to Jesus. I wonder what your first reaction is when something goes wrong. You got that bad news from the doctor. What do I cling to? You, you, that relationship doesn't work out as you thought it would. What do I grab onto? What if our reaction, what if our reflex was just to fall to our knees in prayer? I say, God, God, I need you. I can't do this on my own. I can't fasten my life to anything else. Everything else is shifting and fading and temporary, but you, God, you're eternal. God, I want to fast my life to you, my hope. I'm not looking back. I know that my best days are ahead, but right now I can't really see that. So God, I just want to fast my life to you. Can we have a reaction that when we're walking through difficulty that we go to his word and we rehearse his promises? God, you're faithful. Even when we're faithless, you're still faithful. Even when we come to the end of our own strength, God, your power made perfect in our weakness. Can we fasten our life to Jesus? A wise person once said, you have to choose, you have to make, you have to make the choice before you have to make the decision. Make the choice before you have to make the decision. What this basically means is that before everything goes bad, make the predetermined choice so that when everything is going bad, you don't have to make a decision when you're all out of craziness. Make the choice before so you don't have to make the choice later. I want to encourage you this morning to start to develop inside of you a, 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 an instinct that when things start to shake and shift and when the future looks daunting and when you don't really know how you're going to move forward but you know you're not going to be moving back to say, you know, what? before I even get into that situation, I'm going to choose, make the choice to trust and fasten my hope to Jesus over everything else. So if my house gets taken away, guess what? I love Jesus. If I feel that feeling of loss, a loss of a loved one, guess what? I still have Jesus. If my health starts to decline, guess what? I'm not fastening my life on that. I still have Jesus. If my finances start to deteriorate, guess what? I still have Jesus. And when we find ourselves in this place where we truly have our hope and our trust in the God of again, God starts to open up doors. God starts to give you the peace and the comfort. God starts to bring new and fresh revelation. I believe there might be someone in this room today and maybe you've been feeling like God has maybe lost your address. Maybe he's not keeping track of what's going on in your life and you've been feeling like, man, I just don't know how I'm going to move forward. Does God even see? Does God even know? Does God even hear? And you've dabbled in putting your trust in some other things. In relationships, maybe. I don't know what it is for you. Maybe in your status or your job title. And I want to encourage you today to change that reaction to start going back to his word, to get planted in his house. Join a connect group with people that are gonna help fasten your life to Jesus. Start to come into his presence with the, in worship and just bring, open up your heart and say, God, I'm choosing. I don't, it doesn't matter what I'm going through. God, I'm fastening my life to you. I put my trust in Jesus, the anchor of my soul, the anchor of my soul. Maybe you're in this room right now and you've, you felt like maybe your past, your best days are behind you. 
I don't know what your situation is today. I don't know what you've been walking through or how old you are or how old you think you are. I want to encourage you today to fasten, refasten your hope to Jesus today because your best days are still ahead of you. He's not finished with you yet. He's not finished with you yet. You might feel like quitting even, but fasten your hope to Jesus because he's not finished with you yet. Would you stay with me this morning, church, as we get ready to close this service out in prayer? I'm going to ask if you would in this room, would you just bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment of privacy today in, in the house? Nobody looking around, nobody moving around, nobody causing any distractions right here, right now. If you're in this room and you've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And I'm talking about the faithfulness of God. I'm talking about the goodness of God. I'm talking about the God of again. But maybe you've never even at a, on a first hand level experienced God's goodness. And maybe you're in this room today and you feel like you could never have a relationship with God because of who you are or what you've done. And I want to let you know today that the grace of God wants to meet you where you are and he wants to give you a hope for a better future and it's found only in Jesus. And today, you have an invitation to choose not to fasten your hope to yourself, but your hope for eternity in Jesus. The Bible says that God, he so loved you and me, the world, that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whosoever, doesn't matter who you are, what you've done or where you've been, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have an everlasting life with God. What that verse means is that we can fasten our hope to eternity with Jesus. And it all comes to a decision. Saying, God, I'm going to choose to accept your free gift of salvation and your free gift of life. I'm going to choose to stop living for myself and fasten my life to you. And if you're here this morning and you say, I want a relationship with Jesus. I'm tired of living for myself. I want to surrender my life to him. I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, I want you just to shoot your hand up so I know who I'm praying for this morning. One, Jesus loves you so much that he gave everything for you. Two, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. You can settle right here today. Three, if you're here and you want that relationship with Jesus, would you put a hand up in the house this morning? Come on, yeah, I see the hand in the back. That's awesome. Yeah, I see the hand back there. It's amazing. Anybody else? Anybody else who say, I want to put my trust and my hope in Jesus? Anybody else? Yes, I see the hand right there. That's amazing. Come on. Anybody else in the house? The Bible says that Jesus, he stands at the door of our heart and he's knocking. We just have to let him in. Anybody else in the room this morning? Amen. Come on. Come on. If you just made that decision to follow Jesus, it's the best decision of your entire life. And it's the beginning of a journey, not the destination of a journey, but it's the beginning of a new journey with Jesus Christ. And in just a moment, we're going to pray, and I want you to pray with me in just a second. But before we do, I want to let you know there's a couple of next steps I want to encourage you to do. One, I want to encourage you to tell somebody, tell somebody, talk to one of us here on staff here, or talk to a friend of yours. Let them know the decision you just made, because when you tell somebody, it makes that decision more real to you. Second thing is to find a Bible and start reading it for yourself. This journey is not supposed to be just coming to church and opening up the Word of God at church, but to read and grow on yourself. And the third thing is to find a church to get plugged into. We're not supposed to follow Jesus alone by ourselves, but we're supposed to be in community. And we'd be honored if you considered making our church your home church. And we'd love to invite you to Growth Walk after church next Sunday. And we'd love to get to meet you. And but if not our church, find a church and get plugged in because we're supposed to do it together. Amen. Hey, I want to pray for us this morning and then we're going to transition our service and we're going to celebrate baptisms. But I'm going to ask that if everybody in the room, would you pray this prayer with me? But this prayer, this prayer is for those who just raised their hand for salvation. Come on. Can you repeat this after me, church? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come on, every voice. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your grace, for your grace and your mercy. And your mercy. That you give me hope. That you give me hope for my future. For my future. I know my best days. I know my best days are ahead of me. Are ahead of me. 
So today, so today I'm, choosing I'm choosing not to fasten my life to myself, not to fasten my life to myself, but to fasten my hope to you, Jesus. But to fasten my hope to you, Jesus. Take me, Jesus. Take me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. You are the Lord of and my life. And everybody said together, amen, amen. Come on.